matchup here. And of course, Errol Gray, as we mentioned, Gabriel much taller Sanchez. than Sabone. He's got a two and a half height and excuse me, two and a half inch height advantage. The weight's the same. Good reach advantage for Harold Gray. He's got a great jab. He should be able to use it. And of course, today we're going to be fighting by the IBF rules, Larry. There's no three knockout rule in effect. No standing in can. It cannot be saved by the belt in any round. And in the event of an unintentional headbutt, we've got the six round butt rule, which means if it's more than six rounds, we go to the scorecard. If it's less than six rounds, we're going to have a no contest. As we mentioned, Harold Gray has knocked out power. 18 wins, 15 by knockout. And in his first 16 fights, 15 were by knockout. And Harold Gray can put you out early. He's got four one-round knockouts. Since he's won the title, though, and our referee there is Gabe San uh, Sanchez Lopez. Since he's won the title, both fights have gone the distance, both winning and in defense. Prior to that, only one of his fights had gone the distance, and that was only six rounds, and that was all the way back in 1991. So your question before we were talking about about his title fights going the distance, is there some concern for the 12-round distance in general? Uh, Sabone has been 12 rounds one time, and he's been 10 rounds one time. That was back in uh, 1991 with Hank Sabone. From that angle, the height advantage does not seem significant. And you know that Orlando Sabone would love to leave the ring as the champion. Our Alcazar. judges today, Raimundo Alcazar, Rock Garcia Duenes, and Florentino Salgado. Man, you say that nice. Rock Garcia was a judge on the Italian fight when uh, we did his last defense. Very popular judge, an IBF judge, the general from Colombia. Round one underway. Great to have you with us on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network. All right, Michael, along with Arnie Rosenthal. The IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship on the line. Harold Gray in the blue trunks is the champion. In the white trunks, Orlando Tabone. And Tabone scored with the first punch of the fight. Harold Gray seems a little reluctant. Doesn't seem to have warmed up very much. You see a lot more sweat coming off of Tabone here in round one. Always something you want to look at when a fighter comes into the ring. As hot as it is, sweat. I think it wouldn't be tough to warm up and of course, then you have trying to make weight. Fighter had to lose some weight, try to sweat it out. He won't have as much sweat when fight time approaches. Three common opponents between these guys, Larry. Uh, they both beat the same guys three times. The difference was, though, that Gray knocked out the guys, and two of them went the distance to Torbone, and the other one, Torbone was able to stop. You can see the height advantage there by Gray. Gray moving in with the left hand, and Tabone ties up. Tabone faced Derby Osorio on November 91. It was a six-round decision winner. That came four months after Gray knocked Osorio out in the first round. That's an example of the difference between these two new fighters, but Tabone has a shot for a world championship right here tonight. Gray keeping his distance in round one. Good right hand there by Gray. And Tabone ducked away. Awkward bull rush by Tabone. Both these guys in tremendous condition. They weigh 115 pounds. If you try to make 115, you can't carry anything extra. Take a look at the slickness. I on noticed. The Colombian gloves I down noticed here. that. When we did the fight down here recently for the flyway title with Tejedon Cepeda, there was a big fight at the weigh-in over whether to use Reyes gloves, which of course were made in Mexico, where Cepeda was from, or these Colombian gloves. And a big factor was that these are puncher's gloves. I mean, in America, we think Reyes are puncher's gloves compared to Everlast. Right. Uh, even more so when it comes to these very slick Colombian gloves that tend to cut you more. Good right hand there by the challenger to Bone. Rock to Gray just a bit. Bone's getting some respect here in the first round. You don't see Everlast gloves that much, do you? In championship fights anymore? Mostly Reyes gloves. It depends where you are and what the status of the situation is. There's places like New Jersey where they don't really like to use Reyes at all if they can avoid it altogether. 
stand there by Timon as we approach the end of round one. Book, scheduled for 12, the Junior Bantamweight Championship yeah, out here on Gray in Orlando, Orlando to Bone. Who would you give round number one to, Arnie? I gave it to Bone. I thought it was well. a very good round for him. Uh, you know, I, I started to see a situation like the way we looked at the Bergman Cassiani fight, though, where, uh, you know, maybe Gray's just getting warmed up. He hasn't used his uh, reach and height advantage that much yet, so Bone got in a couple of good shots. He didn't win the round big. Uh, but, but Gray is a uh, is more serious puncher, and of course, this is my voice you're hearing. You see Harold Gray very intent on his trainer, listening to every word he's saying, nodding yes. There's certainly a cockiness or a confidence that carries itself with the champion, and Harold Gray certainly is confident right now, but the bone doesn't look worried either. Harold Gray came in as a big underdog when he fought Julio Borboa. It was Borboa's sixth defense. It was in the United States, more or less Borboa's home turf at the Great Western Forum in L.A., and, and really surprised everyone. It was a split decision win, but uh, a, if there's a good split decision win, that was a good split decision win where Gray was concerned. Both fighters were cutting that fight. Good shot there to the body. Both fighters trying to loosen up a little bit here in round two. Gray turning up the heat. Good shot there by Timon. Timon has very little to lose. He's lost four fights. He's got a championship opportunity. And he's being shy. Gray, the champion, stands tall. And it's going to be interesting, Larry. Of course, we mentioned it in Gray's last defense against Vincel Castro. He got dropped in that fight, right? It'll be a matter of Tabone can carry a punch in the later rounds. I would have to believe he's only gone 12 rounds once. That was in February of 1993. He lost that 12 round decision to David Merchant. And prior to that, he had just been 10 against a guy named Luis Polano. Lost that fight as well. And he lost the fight before that to Alfredo Godoy. So he lost three in a row, three of his four fights. Uh, of his four losses came at the end of 1992 and the start of 93 and he's turned himself around since then though he did fall a loser in Panama as we mentioned to Marco Sanchez February of 94 well he also has a little bit of trouble getting down to the 115 both of those three losses came in a row at 115 pounds he immediately jumped up his weight was fighting up around 118 119 came in just on the weight limit for this fight at 115 pounds. Good work by Tabone inside. Now Harold Gray Looking back against good. the ropes. Shoots out the right hand. Another right hand by Gray. Well, both these fighters are from Colombia. The crowd is behind the champion, Harold Gray. He's working the body. Then he's going to move upstairs to the head. Under a minute to go in round two. And Tabone showing some wear and tear now round two as Gray has turned up the attack. Good right hand by Gray right on the butt. Larry, it's going to be interesting and important to point out here that Tabone in his four losses has never been stopped. He lost all four fights by decision. So Harold Gray, who's a big knockout artist and has never knocked out anybody in a world title fight against Tabone, who's never been stopped. The right hands there for Harold Gray. Good jab there by Tabone, trying to buy some time, buy some distance. Another strong right by Gray. A left hand by Gray finds the mark. Gray has turned up the intensity in round two. Round one was a feeling out round for Gray. In this round, he's totally outclassing Tabone. Too, that's for sure. Good, good round for Gray. Um, the question is, Tabone took what looked to me like Sunday punch from Harold Gray during that round and, and didn't go down and didn't even necessarily stop coming forward. So it's a question of how many shots we take a look at action for round number two. Very good round for Gray. A couple of nice low blows he snuck in there while he had a chance. This is a right hand by Harold Gray. Right. You don't have a chance to see just where it landed there from that angle. 
Great palm corner of the champion, Harold Gray. And what a difference a round makes. Look at Tacon there. After round one, he looked fresh. Now after round two, you see a, a swelling, a discoloration under his right eye. Seconds out, the referee says, Gabe Sanchez Lopez. Round three. IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Howard Gray, the blue trunks, the champion. Orlando Tabon, the white trunk, champion, a challenger. Howard Gray stalking. Larry, you felt that Gray won the last fight where he went at the split decision win over Bel Castro. I did. I felt that he did, even though Bel Castro, uh, a strong, tough little fighter. But uh, I thought that Harold Gray did what he had to do to win. And in that fight, he, he turned into more of a boxer than a puncher, that's for sure. As the fight wore on, he scored towards the end of the fight repeatedly. Del Castro really could do a whole lot. There's a amateurish miss there by Tabon. They had a multinational judging system for that fight. The Italian judge, of course, to keep Del Castro happy. Right. The Colombian judge to keep Gray happy. And the American judge as the impartial one. They don't have that problem today. Both fighters from Colombia. We've got three Colombian judges. We saved on the air pairs. <laughs> Fans favorite, though, is the champion, Harold Gray. Good right hand by Gray. Rocks Orlando to ball. Good crowd here. Gray is trying to load up with that right hand. I think he, he, he knows he can, he can score with the right hand. He probably thinks if he got the perfect punch in, he could knock the man out. Although last round, he hit him with what I thought was, was about as close to perfect as he might get. And Pabone just looked at him. But he seemed to uh, feel it more on his stool in between rounds where he looked totally out of it. Gray. Continuing to stalk him for the first time in the fight. Pabone dancing around just a bit. Now Gray. Straight up fighter. And he's looking for Pabone to make a mistake. You can see it right now. Pabone carrying that left hand low. Gray would like nothing better than to come over that left hand with the right of his own. That one just came up just a bit short. There's much punching going on here, Arnie, in round three. Well, they threw a lot of punches in the first two rounds, and particularly to bone a lot in the first, Gray in the second. Both fighters seem to be taking this round off, and it's funny, sometimes both fighters have an unwritten rule where it's like, hey, we're taking this round off. Right. And, uh, they're both dancing, however, and they don't press each other. He felt the power of Gray in the last round. He feels he has to do a little more boxing. They show a little showboating there. Jab by Gray. I think that Tabon trying to frustrate Gray, but Gray will not be frustrated. Well, I don't think he's going to win this fight on the outside from Gray. Gray's got too good a jab and too good of a reach advantage as we come to the end of round number three. Left hand miss there, and you see Tabone raising his hands. He feels he's doing a good job. How do you feel, Arnie? Well, I don't think he won that round. I think the, the, the thing that helped him win the first round, which was the aggressiveness, a little bit of infighting, some body shots, showing a lot of different moves, he's abandoned, and, and he's not going to fight. He's fighting Gray's fight now from the outside. Gray's got a great jab. Uh, you're going to sit there and try to win the war of jabs with him, you're going to lose, especially if you're giving him two and a half inch advantage. We're at Cartagena, Colombia, the Coliseum Bernardo Caraballo. Championship boxing on the Cedric Kushner Sports Network, the IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship. Champion Harold Gray through three rounds on top. There's the challenger, Orlando Tabone. Tabone in round three really did a lot of moving, trying to stay away. Power punching Harold Gray, who takes his mouthpiece off. Round four underway. That was interesting watching both fighters there put their mouthpiece in and out themselves. Uh, that's something you would see with American fighters, especially with a lot of the new form fitting mouthpieces. They can't even get them out if they wanted to. They have to right. basically slide out of the mouth. to Bone can keep moving, keep staying away. Harold Gray. Bone has 10 knockouts. 
last two fights have been won by knockout by the challenger Orlando Tabal. Face on Harold Gray. I mean, he is concentrating on the challenge. Again, this might turn into a chess match as it wears on. Either fighter want to get first. We get a counter. Both fighters looking to counter. There, Harold Gray missed with the left hand. You know, Larry Gray is letting the bone back into this fight because it looks like he's looking to load up for that one big shot. He's not counter punching, and, and even though I said it's the wrong fight for Tabone to fight, Tabone, you know, at least in the first half of this round, we need to fight from the outside. Stiff right hand, not much behind it, but it was a jolt to Tabone. Tabone continues to try to dance away. Gray has really done nothing to try to establish any kind of jab in this fight. Gray taking this round off. In terms of punching, body shot by Gray. There's a jet. Strong left hand by Gray. Even a stronger left hand by Gray. Gray very crafty. Gray got in there because take a look. You watch, watch the bones right hand when he throws his left jab. Drops his right when he throws his left, sort of a classic boxing mistake. Right. And every time he's been doing that, the last 30 seconds, Gray's coming over the top with a left hook. Body Gray also stuck in Gray. a good left hook to the body. That's yes. Gray does not waste punches. See the different position he's trying to get to bone in. Trying to set him up for that right hand. The body work could help him get to that. Strong right. The ball still stands there. Another right hand. The left hand by Gray. The left by Gray. Good body shot there by Tabal. Well, he doesn't want to start keeping his left hand down like that. Tabal beginning to stand still there. You don't want to do that against Harold Gray. Ball. Nothing on the punches of Tabal there. All right, we're through four rounds. How do you have it scored? I've got it three rounds to one. Harold Gray, I gave the bone the first round. So 39, 37. Harold Gray, of course, not officially. Good strong right there on the ring. Yeah, and he set it up off a double jab and was able to keep walking forward. That right hand, if he keeps scoring with it, will be the uh, difference in the fight. And you see, Tabone has no guard there, just an amateur move forward. Well, Tabone started to make two other errors during that round. He started keeping his left hand low on purpose, almost like a crock gym style right, down right. around the, the knees. And then watch his right hand when he throws his left. He drops it significantly, and that's when he got caught with that good left hook from Harold Gray. Gray's going to time him on that dropping, and he's going to put him away. Harold Gray's got a great left hook. He goes to the mouthpiece again to get out himself. It is hot. Coliseum Bernardo Caraballo. Round five. IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship. The champion, Harold Gray, the blue trunks. Good left hand by the challenger to Bone. Shook Gray just a bit. And to Bone wants to put the heat on. Gray says, come on, let's get it on. Gray not throwing punches, however. Now he starts. He caught Gray resting and landed a really nice left hand. Right hand there by Tabone. <laughs> Tabone just doesn't seem to have much behind his punches. Not yep. much punching power by Tabone. Harold Gray slips. That's a slip, no doubt about that. Not a knockdown. Harold Gray lost his balance. But again, Tabone putting the pressure on. Good uppercut by Tabone. A left hand by Tabone. Another left by Tabone. You say he didn't have much power, but Craig cannot respond. You know, he doesn't have power when he goes downstairs, but he's distracting Gray enough to bring his elbows down, and then he, when he goes upstairs, he seems to be hurt, Gray. Another left by Tabone. Gray content to stay against the ropes. Gray is the champion. And the challenger, Orlando Tabone, taking it to the champion. Now, Gray firing back. Good body shot by Gray. 
What great action in round five. So to tell. I'll tell you this, if the bone can't hurt him in close like that, Larry, he's gonna wind up in a war like this that he doesn't want with a much heavier hitting gray. Oh, the bone's holding his own in there right now. Well, I think I see a trickle of blood from the right eye of the bone. Well, great missing with an uppercut. Round five, it's been a war. Not great beginning to pursue. This is with a left, scores with a right. Another strong right by Gray. Great body shot by Gray. Tabone in some trouble now. Tabone's in big trouble. He punched himself out early in this round, too, and he's having trouble keeping his hands up. He's keeping his right hand very low right now. Now Gray senses he might be able to finish it with 40 seconds to go in round five. Tabone exhausted, trying to stay away. Well, Gray continues the pressure. Tabone trying to hold on, but he didn't have the strength. Harold Gray left and a right. Great combinations by Gray. Tabone wobbles, but he still stands. Now he puts on some pressure. What a great round. Gray misses that uppercut. It's almost one punch could do it for Harold Gray if he could connect. Tabone hanging on, firing back, left hand by Tabone at the end of round five. Classic bit of strategy, Larry, on the part of Harold Gray. He weathered the storm from Orlando Tabone, and we both agreed, was scoring points, but in a pity patty kind of fashion. They weren't hurting Gray, distracting him a little bit, even when he was landing on the face, and Gray let, weathered that for about 60 seconds. Tabone totally punched himself out, and next thing you know, Gray's in there taking total command, and of course, he's the much heavier hitter of the two fighters. There's a slip by Harold Gray. He just got his legs tangled up and fell down. Uh, not, a, not a punishing situation there for Gray to go down, but fighting inside. Here it is. It's a trip. It was, a, it was a slip by Harold Gray. You know, really, he's lucky he did not get caught with that right hand while he was down. El sexto asalto. Although at the moment, the bone hasn't de shown de us de much de in de terms de of punching de power. De Intensity in round six really got turned up there. The bone got it started. Harold Gray, the champion, finished at the end of the round. Here we go, round six. Scheduled for 12. IBF World Junior Bantamweight Championship on the line. And once again, Tabone trying to stay away. Is that a signal that he might be tired? I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but he doesn't want to get into another exchange. No, it's a signal that his body's starting to hurt because Gray really, again, there with a beautiful two-punch combination to the body. He's laying a lot of hurt on the body. He can't fight Gray from the outside, but he doesn't want to go on the inside and take those body shots because he knows if Gray comes upstairs while he covers, it's going to be good night. You know, Harold Gray right now thinking about a lot of big money fights on the horizon for him. Names like a you know, rematch with Borboa, Johnny Breedall out of Denmark would be a great fight, Danny Romero. Odds in him fighting any kind of a unification. The other fights are over in the, uh, other champions are over in the Orient. The WBC champion, Hiroshi Kawashima. Of course, he's Japanese, WBA champ, Young Cho Lee out of Korea. They don't figure to fight each other soon. IBF not very recognized in Japan, nor is the, uh, some of the other governing bodies in Colombia. But Gray, after a, what I thought was a pretty sluggish first round, looking very sharp. Harold Gray, the blue trunks, he is a champion. To both the challenger has done, done mostly all for this round. The bone wobbled just again there. Good left hook. Backing up, trying to stay away from Harold Gray. Harold Gray would like to get that first knockout as a champ. He mentioned it as we got ready for this fight. And that might be what he's trying to accomplish here. Harold I Gray. I think he's well on his way to it, Larry, also. I think right now, for my money, Orlando Tabone is in a major survival mode right now. Moving forward, though, throwing punches. Harold Gray backed into a corner. Spins away, scores with the left hand inside. He's just suckering him in right now. Nice body shot by Gray, then he went upstairs. Left hand by Gray, using all of his arsenal against Orlando Tabone. Well, 
Gray has not changed his stat strategy at all in this fight. Stand up, straight up fighter. Keep his guard high. He continues to move forward. To bone his dance at times. Fought from a distance. Fought on the inside. Trying to mix it up. You can see, though, how if Gray is in with another heavy puncher, uh, to a certain extent, like Vince Del Castro, how he can get dropped. He's been hit with some shots today that if he was hit with somebody heavier, he might have gone down. I think he just knows at this point the bone can't hurt him. Round six winding down. Bone continues to run the champion Harold Gray. Not going to win by running for the champion. Five rounds to one is how I have it scored for the champion Harold Gray. How about you, Arnie? Likewise, Larry, 59 55, five rounds to one. Harold Gray. Uh, basically, it's been a shutout since the second round. And we take a look at action here from round number six. There's that good left hook that landed on the part early on in the round. Harold Gray right on to Bone, who seemed like, again, to reiterate survival mode at this point. And he's got a lot of, uh, we're only halfway gone in this fight. He's got a long time to survive. Last time Orlando Tabone went 12 rounds was on February the 27th of 1993. Whereas two times in the last five months, Harold Gray has gone 12. Both times, championship fights, both times he left the winner. There's Tabone. Hoping that that second wing kicks in here pretty soon. Now Gray slowly from his corner. The ball begins to move again. Crowd behind the champion, Harold Gray, chanting the name Harold. And Orlando Tabone, the challenger, you're right. He's in a survival mode. His punches have no power. He's throwing them from every conceivable angle. He really has no chance of knocking Gray out. Now, and right now, Gray is going to bring him in with, with sort of a sense of false security. Let him start to work a little bit and then get him in a situation like this where he's got him in a corner, he's got him against the ropes, and he's just going to go to work on that body. Eventually come back upstairs. And whatever momentary aggression Tabone had, he just had it taken away from him. He's trying, he's trying to get in there, but Harold Gray too crafty, just too much of a boxer to allow Tabone in. Just missing with the right hand, Harold Gray, the champion. Misses again with the right hand. And Tabone is wide open for either hand. Oh, he's throwing those arm punches. Very desperation type shots right now. Telegraphing them big time. Good shoe shine in close again by Gray. Throwing a lot of poise, picking his opportunity. Maybe. That body shot hurt. That body shot hurt to ball. Oh, right hand hurt to ball. The bone doing some talking. Lost his mouthpiece. Where did he? Yeah. Some blood. We have some blood. We have a, a glove, a little tape on the glove of Gray, and the referee really picking a bad time for Harold Gray to do some maintenance work. I was just about to say that Harold Gray. Perhaps maybe he's being a little bit too slow and cautious, and that's why some of these fights might be going 12 when he picked up the action, worked the body shot, came upstairs, and really had the bone look like he was ready to go. For a second, I'm sitting there going, gee, we don't have a standing eight count rule. Ray's just going to wait and counter. He's going to wait and counter. Challenger Orlando to bone. As to bone moves around the ring to his left. That, of course, is into the right hand of Harold Craig. Gray will just bear down. Not Gray against the ropes. Uh, but he's used this successfully before. He's going to roll the bone in. A little bit of a rubber dope situation, huh? And then spin him. Good right hand there by Gray as he still waits against the ropes. Now he comes out fighting the left hand by Gray. Not trying to time that uppercut. 
Bo doesn't have a whole lot left. Doesn't have much be authority behind his punches. Really not putting any combinations together either. Shutout continues. Finaliza el asalto numero siete. Here in the corner of the challenger, Orlando Tabone, what kind of advice would you give him? I would say right now, you know that you've got a fighter that's very tired. He can't win the fight on the outside. The only thing you could do at this point is just keep trying to tell him to press the action, get in there. Maybe he gets that one lucky shot off. Um, What's going through his mind because he's getting his... How would you like to be in that suit? Here's our producer, Dan Shoemaker, working the fight from ringside. No, but the fighter himself, you're telling him you got to get inside, but he is really taking a beating. It's tough for him to follow those instructions, you know? Well, right now, he's taking tremendous body shots. When he tries to get off from the outside, not only is he beaten to the jab, but his hands are left out there, and 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 Gray comes underneath. Well, what are you going to do, tell him to quit? Right. Short no. of stopping the fight, you have to tell him to go on in. You know, as we're going into round number eight here, he's got five more rounds to go if he's even going to go to distance. It seems to me that if he keep, kept running like he is now, he probably would be able to go the distance. Champion Harold Gray in command. After a slow first round, he has dominated this fight. I mean, I can't look at this fight and tell you any major strategy that I could tell Orlando Tabone to use to win this fight, only because I know that he doesn't have the punching power once he gets inside. We saw right. that. Body shot by Tabone. You got to give credit, though. He's still in there battling. I mean, he had that one sequence, I believe, when he was back in the third round, where for 60 seconds, Gray gave him all the room he needed. Let him work the body, let him work the head. And when it was all over with, Gray just spun him and, and then took the fight to him for the next two minutes. Almost stopped him. Young Gray with that right hand. With a very effective right hand so far in this fight. Scheduled for 12 rounds for the IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship. And right now, Trabone is totally out of class. Good left there by Gray. Gray came up underneath with that uppercut. It could be all over. I think Gray's also having a great time. He's having fun in there right now. He knows he's totally in control. He can, every once in a while, let Tabone come back into the fight, you know, pick off the jabs as Tabone throws him, and then land at will, move back. Right. Gray's and legs are fresh. Oh, when, when, when you're feeling this good, and you're defending your title back in your home country, he's just going to have a great time in there right now. You know, Gray has been the aggressor of this fight from the second round on. Worked the body nicely. Score with the right hand nicely. Could have been champion a little bit more. But overall, a nice performance by the champion, Harold Gray, to this point. Well, the fact is he hasn't had a jab that much because the bone's coming in and he's been able to work the body. He's also been able to load the bone in by laying on the ropes. The only time he's had to use the jab is when the bone's tried to fight him on the outside. Once again, good body work there by Harold Gray. There's the uppercut we talked about. Scores right on the mouth of Tabone. See, what Tabone's been very ineffective, Larry, as well, is when Gray comes in for the body shot, when you throw a body shot, you've got to be open. That's by definition. You're coming in. And, and Tabone Ooh. either has the speed or the skill Ooh, that hurt. to counter the body shot. Yes, it did. That body shot. Now you can see Tabone holding his left arm against his ribs right there, and his chin is exposed. Oh. Right there to the left rib, so Tabone, great body shot by Harold Gray. That hurt just to watch that punch. All right, today's broadcast brought to you by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Más Fina. Can I say that one time? I like it. La Cerveza Más Fina. Coming up round nine. All right, we asked you the question, what would you be telling the champion, Harold Gray, that he doesn't already know? 
Harold Gray is pitching a perfect fight right now. It's like, uh, what, what would you tell Doris Larson in the 56 World Series in game number six? Watch out for Yogi. Actually, game number five. Yeah, you don't want Yogi, Yogi to give him that knee in the groin. Swelling around the eyes and nose is the challenger Orlando Tabone as we head to round nine. Cartagena, Colombia. Pretty good crowd early on. We thought that there would be some empty seats, but as we look around, full house for Harold Gray's title defense. Some heads there. That shocked Harold Gray, put him on the defensive. Tabone with an opportunity to try to take advantage. Scoring nicely there, the challenger. Best punches of the last, I'd say, eight, nine rounds. But can he keep it up? Good right hand there by Tabone. As Gray against the ropes. Misses with the uppercut. Well, apparently his corner told him to go out there and throw caution to the wind. See if he can land that one fucking punch. Just a little jab there by Tabone, but nothing on that left hook at all. Another left hook, nothing on that. Another left hook, nothing on that. But you know what, he's scoring points, and, and Gray was probably a little surprised here at this point to see that Tabone even has this much left in his arsenal. I would have to agree with that. I thought I left Tabone for dead two rounds ago. Uppercut by Gray, and Tabone in some trouble. You see, when Tabone comes in, he drops himself right in range of that uppercut. Another uppercut by Gray. Well, this is very similar Gray. to third round action where Gray weathered a storm and all of a sudden Tabone had that 60 seconds of fight in him and that's all he's got. His arms are very low right now. Back to protecting that body. See if Gray could finish him off Tabone against the ropes. Hands at his side. And what Tabone has not been able to do as we mentioned before is he can't counter punch the body attack of Harold Gray. Gray is open when he goes downstairs to the body. But the right bone is much more preoccupied with worrying about blocking the punch and protecting the pain that he's in when he gets hit rather than counterpunching the body attack of Gray. Nice right hand there. Prayer by Tabone was answered. Another right hand by Gray. Gray has forgotten about the body this round. He did some damage last round in round eight. Gray, exclusively to the head. There's a body shot. Tabone dipped down low. It looked like he was dipping down to stay down. Yeah. I thought he was going to take a quick uh, mandatory eight on his own. Good body shot there in the heart of Tabone. Right there on the chest. Left hand. You know, the one punch, though, the Gray doesn't have. You're looking for that uppercut right now. It's been effective when he's thrown it. You would think he would be throwing some right uppercuts so that Tabone would Tabone tuck those arms in. Tabone, look at that left hand. Straight down at his side, trying to protect those ribs from a body shot. Left hand, good strong left hand by Gray. And Tabone in some trouble. But we approach the end of round nine. Harold Gray in command of this fight. The end of round nine. And with three rounds to go, Arnie, you, you, you figure Tabone has to knock him out to win, doesn't he? I figured that around the sixth <laughs> round. I got it 89-82 for our champion Harold Gray. It's been all Gray since the second round. And we take a look at action here from round number nine. Uh, another one of those rounds where for about 60 seconds, good left. Gray let Tabone wear himself out and then came off the ropes with a beautiful combination that we just saw. A body shot, right? It's almost like a neck shot there, and right in the neck. My impression, though, do you feel like he's letting Tabone a little bit off the hook that with another yes, follow up? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I figured Greg could have taken him out two rounds ago, but maybe again he wants to get the work in. Certainly would like an easy night's work. His last two fights have been 12 round decisions. And the corner might be telling him just that put this guy away. Round 10 underway and to bone and you're talking about a survival mode check him out now well, there was a perfect case though if he's in with a heavier hitter right the left Tabone hand landed a, a you know a nice left from the chin of Harold Gray who wasn't paying attention because he figures either the bone is out of it or can't hurt him 
Bone has uh, very little left right now. Harold Gray swelling around both eyes. Early on in this fight, Orlando to Bone landed some pretty good punches. Gray has a bad body attack, too. There's a body shot. He had to Bone Wincy two rounds ago with the right hand to the ribs. He's not going back to that. Tabone tries a body shot of his own. Tabone is outclassed in this fight, but you got to give him credit. He's fighting. He's not running. He's in there fighting. Strategically speaking, though, he doesn't have the skills right. to be able to counter Gray's attack. Tabone dancing away. Escape the punishing shots of Harold Gray, the champion. Least action of any round of the fight. A little tape coming loose from the right glove of Harold Gray. And once again, Tabone gets a reprieve. You know, the two fights that went the distance side of contention for Harold Gray were split decisions as we mentioned earlier. This one, not even close to being a split decision, but you would think that he would really want to go all out and stop Orlando Tabone to get this first knockout. I'm very surprised right now that he's letting Tabone back in the fight and not pressing the action. Third left hand by Tabone. Another left hand by Tabone. Bone still got a shot, still got some heart oh. left. Peppery in the face of the champion, Harold Gray. Uppercut scores on the face of Gray. Can Tabone put him down? Gray is in some trouble right now in the corner. Still 40 seconds to go in round 10. That's what we've been saying all along, Larry. If he's in there with a heavier puncher, he might have been out of there tonight. Tabone is throwing prayers. I mean, he is throwing caution to the wind, throwing everything he's got at Harold Gray, and he is connecting. Doesn't have enough, though, to put Harold Gray down. I got to say, if Harold Gray was in with some of the other heavier hitters in the 115-pound weight class, I'm thinking in particular Danny Romero or even Julio Borbola lands a shot like that on the fight's all over. Harold Gray holding on just a bit. Harold Gray, the champion, his mouth open. Orlando Tabone has not won a round since round number one, and I've got to give him that round, round 10. I'm with you. Fortunately, it doesn't help the situation. I no. officially have him behind 98 92. But if he can put some sort of an attack together, he, he, he's still almost at least on our scorecard to see the knockout. I think so. He, even a couple 10 8 rounds wouldn't be enough. Here it was, the challenger to Bone. Again, he threw some prayers in there. Wild punches that connected. Had Harold Gray in a little bit of trouble in the corner. This action coming after the initial shot. Going off the top of Gray's head. Well, the point is, whether those were hard shots or easy shots, or whether he even had Gray hurt, there's no business for Harold Gray in a fight that he had totally in command getting hurt like that in the 10th round. Still two rounds to go, so the 10th round could have helped Tabone gain some confidence. He has to know he needs a knockout. And he's shaking out the cobwebs out of his arms there, and that's not a good sign. You don't want to start the round shaking your arms loose. Well, Gray, the champion, second defense of the title that he won in August of 1994 over Julio Barbaro in California. Really shocked a lot of people that night, too. Well, Boa looked like he was going to be champion for quite a while. That was his sixth title defense. A lot of people thought that he didn't win the fight. Because, oddly enough, as we talk about the only time that uh, Gray had been down and been against in his last defense against Del Castro, he was down twice in the Borboa fight, and neither one of them were called knockdowns. And it was a big dispute after that by Borboa's camp, saying that those should have been called knockdowns should have been 10-8 rounds, and even one of them would fall the 10-8 round, Borboa would still be champion because it would have been a, he would have won the fight via majority draw. Tabone moving across.
across the ring. Trying to find a own defense of the champion, Harold Gray. Harold Gray, again, not really doing a whole lot in round 11. He has to know that he's way out in front, but you would think that he'd try to finish impressively. Maybe the uh, punishment he took from Tabone in round 10 did have some lasting effect on Harold Gray. Tabone seems to be the fresher of the two fighters right now, moving, feigning. Well, certainly the 10th round was a wake-up call for him. He came out winging and, and basically accomplished what he wanted to accomplish. His biggest problem is that he can't do that for three minutes around. But if he could combine that sort of an attack with the lateral motion that he's showing right now and trying to counter the jabs, and the fact that Gray's really not doing anything. Right. There's no, no sustained offense coming from Gray right now. Maybe his corner said, look, you're way out points. Don't trade with him. You don't need that. I don't know. I don't know if that's the strategy. I, I think you'd want to finish impressively. Unless, again, you felt some power from Tabone in the last round and, and you get a little there and you say, well, let me just cruise on in and take the decision home. He's letting Tabone come on the inside and shoot shine him right now. And he didn't do anything there. Tabone came in, dropped in four unanswered body shots. And some of that good counter punching and speed that we saw from Gray earlier in the fight, nowhere to be seen right now. Approaching the end of round 11, scheduled to, for 12 rounds, the IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship. Now Gray in the blue trunks, Orlando Tabone in the white trunks. Tabone feels real good right now, raises his hands as he goes to his corner. Well, he won that round. The hole is very deep, though, for Orlando Tabone. Right now, Le vamos a pedir al público de antemano a nombre de la empresa Cuadrilátero y de Cedric Kunder, por favor, finalizado el asalto número 12, no subir al ring. No Harold Gray could be getting a little tired. His third fight in five months, and he is, uh, he's been an active champion. Así que Second title de defense of a... The Empresa Cuadrilátero y Cedric Kunder, of August of last year, so. le pedimos also el favor al público antes de que finalice el asalto número 12. Perhaps we'll see Harold Gray moving up to the man's weight class, and he can be challenging his own countrymen again. It'll be a big fight in Colombia before Harold Mestre. Coming through round six and seven, Harold Gray had total command of this fight. He still probably does on the scorecards of the judges. The judges of this fight, as we mentioned, Alcazar, Nuanes, and Salgado. And to bone. Trying to stay away. Good left hand there. Finally a jab. Harold Gray. but just not enough. You see the right eye of the champion, Harold Gray, You're getting to close. Looking for him, this is the 12th round. That right eye looking a little nasty right now. And I'm telling you, based on that sort of a situation, you know, we'd like to see him get the knockout. I'm sure he would have liked it if it came easy, but his corner might have said, you're way ahead. We don't need to get this eye busted up. we got some other fights coming. Cruz on in. However, he's being a lot more aggressive here in round number 12 than he was in the 11th round. He is Gray fighting with a little more intensity in this round, wanting to finish strong, wanting to finish aggressively. This is countryman Orlando Tabon. I think there's no doubt in the minds of those here at ringside that Gray will win a unanimous decision. But stranger things have happened. 60 seconds to go. Well, I don't think strange enough, I would have a hard time, not to sound naive in terms of boxing, but I would have a hard time, Blue, figuring out how Tabone could possibly ever get a decision here. 
No, I agree with you. Good uppercut. There's the uppercut from Gray. Jabon's got some guts, but Alan Gray's got more punch. Jabon coming down. Very awkward. Very unorthodox. Scores with the left hand. Now holds and hits Gray. Clubbing right hand. Another right hand. Nothing on the punches of Orlando Jabon at this point. Gray has his mouth wide open. Really, he does not, does not need to be inside here now fighting like this. Harold Gray way out in front on all scorecards. He's taking some punishment. Clock winding down. And we're seeing some punches now. Uppercuts, right hand leads from Tabone. You want to wonder where were those shots from round two through nine? punching power in the middle rounds of the fight and let's go to Tokyo with the unofficial scorecard I had a 116-112 but it was sort of a strange kind of a scoring situation to bone look great in the first round no place round two through nine looked like he could be stopped in any of those rounds and then I gave him 10 11 and 12 where he came on real strong had a terrific 10th round in particular where he hurt great and, and showed a lot of uh, you know action and you just have to question here what happened to him during those middle rounds. And at the same time, you want to question why Gray couldn't put him away in you rounds two through nine. You mentioned earlier in the fight, Gray did hit Tabone with his best shots. And Tabone did not go down. In the second round in particular. Right. Hit him with a great right hand in the second round. Atención. Tabone shook it, but that was prior to the body. La decisión. Bone, and you would have thought Gray could pull it off. But this is uh, Gray's third world title fight in a row, going 12 rounds. Right. That's 36 rounds that he's fought now in about a seven month period of time. It's a lot of rounds. A lot of experience for a 23 year old. And you know, Gray, you're right. You know, he, he did not look, uh, not look like he had a whole lot left at the end of the fight. Maybe he has had trouble making the weight. Maybe he ought to think about moving up. And it's going to be interesting, yeah. Uh, and some interesting fights up there again against him and Harold Mestre, both Colombian. Mestre just recently winning the big title vacated by Orlando Canizales at 118 pounds. Uh, it's going to be interesting though, to see how they score it if this is close. He's being interviewed before the decision. I guess he figures he won. Like I said, it would be a shock if he didn't. Ring announcer Freddie Jeanette has collected the scorecards. We await the official decision. Señoras y señores, su atención por favor. Aquí está el resultado oficial de la pelea de campeonato mundial, título Super Mosca de la Federación Internacional de Boxeo Fit. Aquí está el resultado oficial. Here's the official decision. Ganador por decisión mayoritaria. Reteniendo su campeonato mundial, Harold Gay. Well, they didn't read off the scores. That could only tell you that they had it so far apart that they felt it would be embarrassing. They didn't want to diss to Tabone. Tabone. Now Gray, the second defense of a title. IBF Junior Bantamweight champion. And he looks tired. He's been through a fight, but he is the champion. 